friend welcome back to acre homestead we have an extremely busy day in the kitchen today we are doing a ton of freezer meals and we're just going to get right into it because i'm getting a little bit later start than i anticipated so the first thing i'm going to start with with this freezer meal is what's going to take the longest to cook that i need in order to assemble a couple of our meals two of the freezer meals we're going to do today are a lasagna and an italian style stuffed pepper so we need to make some really beautiful red sauce for both of those. Anytime I do freezer meals, I try to think of recipes that coincide with each other where there are some of the same components or same ingredients so that I'm not doing double work. It doesn't take me any extra time to make a huge batch of red sauce as opposed to making just a half a batch or half the amount. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. I just put in some garlic infused oil and we just use all of that we made that together we're gonna have to make some more of that soon and I put two very large onions in here normally when I do my freezer cooking I do a few things to prep ahead of time but I didn't do anything to prep today except for this morning I started a little bit of brown rice on the in the instapot and the other thing I did was this morning I went out into the garden and harvested this huge big bowl of beautiful produce that we're going to use in our freezer cooking today. I have a whole list of things that we're going to be making today. A bunch of things we're going to be doing are a bunch of summer marinades. We're going to be doing marinated chicken and marinated pork. A couple of the different marinades we're going to do are buffalo ranch chicken. All these recipes will be linked down in the description box. Peach, chili, garlic, chicken, and pork. Orange cumin chicken, jalapeno pineapple marinade, and then we're gonna do, like I said, the Italian stuffed peppers, the lasagna. We're gonna do some meatloaf, meatballs, sweet and sour meatballs, so two different styles of meatballs, and enchiladas. I also have two things I wanna prep for this week. Today is Thursday, and over the weekend, I wanna try not to do any cooking. So if I can get two side dishes, a corn salad and a macaroni salad made up today, then Josh and I can eat on those all weekend long. And I don't have to worry about cooking because I will use these freezer meals as meals that we're gonna be using this week to eat. First thing I'm gonna do is shred a ton of cheese. We only have two recipes that need cheese, so we don't need a ton. But if I already have my food processor out shredding cheese, I might as well shred more than I need just for today. Oh, I also wanted to do fajita chicken as well. So we'll see if we get to that. It's gonna be fun. Oh, and I also wanted to do some cookie dough if we get to that, we'll see. We're just gonna figure it out together what we get done today. We're gonna to spend the whole day in the kitchen together, hanging out, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I prefer to shred my own cheese because I feel like it melts better because it doesn't have the anti-caking agent on it. But if you want to use pre-shredded cheese to make your life easier, go ahead and do that. I do buy my cheese in five pound blocks because I can get organic cheese through Azure Standard. And I can link that down in the description box if you're interested in that. I can get it for a really great price and I can't even get organic mozzarella or cheddar cheese in my local grocery stores unless I wanna go to like New Seasons or Whole Foods. And those cheeses are just out of my price range. So I find it to be very, very affordable to do it this way. And like I said, I always prep extra cheese because shredding cheese is not my favorite thing to do. So then I can just go ahead and put this in a baggie, put it in the fridge, or I can throw it in the freezer. No problem at all. Now that we have our cheese shredded, I forgot that I wanted to add some frozen shredded zucchini from last year's garden to our red sauce. I just thought it and squeezed out any extra moisture. That just is gonna add a little bit of extra veggie into our sauce and into our dishes. I like to add that when the onions are cooking so that that zucchini can cook down. And honestly, it just turns into nothing. It's just a great way to add a little extra veggie into your red sauce. I did wanna mention one more thing I did before we got started today. I unloaded my dishwasher and I took my garbage and I put it a clean bag in it and I took it out from underneath the sink. That just makes it a lot easier for cleanup as I go. I can load dishes into the dishwasher. I can just toss things into the garbage can without having to open the cupboard under my sink. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep some corn salsa. This is a side that we're just gonna have for this next coming week. So we're not only making 20, 25, I have no idea how many meals we're gonna end up making, but a lot of meals for you know this month and a half, next two months. 
but I figured if I'm in the kitchen making a mess, I might as well go ahead and just get two sides done, and then I don't have to worry about cooking for, I don't know, four or five days, and that will be a good thing. That way I can focus on helping Josh with the new house and getting all that stuff done. To prep this corn, I'm going to put it on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. The parchment paper is just for easy cleanup, and then we are gonna put a little bit of oil on them salt and pepper and into the oven. I'll probably roast these for about 20-ish minutes at 400 degrees. You can use frozen corn when you do this. I do this a lot with frozen corn. I just make sure it's thawed, put the same things, oil, salt, pepper, put it into the oven, roast it, and you can make the same salsa with fresh or frozen corn. Another one of our sides is gonna be macaroni salad, so I'm gonna get some water on to boil for that. Now we have two of our sides going for this week. We have our sauce going. I think we're gonna start on making some of our meatballs because that is gonna be really easy and I have all the meat thawed. That I guess is one more thing I did last night. I took all the meat out of the freezer and I put it in the refrigerator so that it would be thawed so we could work with it because you really have to use thawed ground beef in order to make meatballs. I do not have any bread to turn into breadcrumbs right now so I'm going to just use rolled oats. You can substitute rolled oats for breadcrumbs in things like meatloaf and meatballs, especially if you're gluten-free. It's a great substitute, and this is about the texture I like to do. I don't turn it into oat flour, just chop it up a little bit. I'm going to make the meatloaf and meatballs at the same time, both styles of meatballs, because they use a lot of the same ingredients. I just peeled two onions. We have all of our homegrown parsley here. I grated, or I peeled some ginger, and we have garlic scapes from the garden I just harvested this morning. I'm gonna process these in our food processor so that we can save ourselves a little bit of time. I already have the food processor dirty, so I might as well use it. That's one thing I love about freezer cooking and bulk cooking is you can continue to use the same dishes. Sometimes you just need to either rinse them out, and that's one way it saves you so much time and energy in the kitchen. I'm gonna start with one onion at a time and I'm gonna put them in here and I'm gonna pulse them. If you don't pre-chop them a little bit, then some at the bottom get really, really finely chopped and some of the top don't get chopped at all. Just like that, that's perfect. I have two bowls here, one for the meatloaf, one for the meatballs. And I'm gonna put one onion in one bowl. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second onion and I'm gonna put it in that bowl. I'm gonna take my garlic scapes. I'm gonna give them a rough chop and we're going to process these in the food processor as well. A garlic scape is the flowering part of a garlic bulb as it's growing and you want to harvest these so that the garlic puts the energy in creating a bigger head of garlic as opposed to creating the flower. It has a nice mild garlic flavor and so you can eat it. It's just a benefit you get when you grow your own garlic. I'm going to put some in the meatloaf, some for the sweet and sour meatballs, and the rest in our sauce, our red sauce. While we're standing right here, I'm gonna add some red wine to our sauce and I'm gonna let that cook down. I'm also gonna add our macaroni noodles to our boiling water. I'm gonna do one pound, so that's half this bag. For the macaroni salad, we have to get the vegetables prepped right now because you put the vegetables in on the hot noodles. I have half an onion that I'm gonna shred in the food processor. Again, didn't have to wash it. Same ingredients. I have three carrots I'm gonna shred in here as well, all in the same container. And then I have homegrown celery I just went out and harvested this morning. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. We're gonna shred this in our food processor. I've never shredded celery before, so we'll see how this goes. A couple big chunks in here. I think I'm going to run the knife through those just so you don't have one big chunk of celery. We're going to put our veg into our bowl that we're going to make our pasta salad in. 
I just added our hot noodles to our vegetables and I added two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. This is all still really warm, so we're gonna mix all of this together. This is a Hawaiian style macaroni salad. The, in the recipe that I'm gonna link down below, it doesn't have celery in it. I'm just adding the celery. There's a big piece I'm just chopping up here so we don't bite into that. Because the celery is fresh from the garden and I thought, you know what, let's just add a little extra veggie. It's gonna add a little green. But that's not part of traditional Hawaiian mac salad. This is a really, really simple macaroni salad. Now what we're gonna do is let this cool completely. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and then we'll finish this off when it's cooled. In the meantime though, our corn is done. So I'm gonna take this out. It's all roasty toasty. I'm gonna let this cool completely before we start handling it. Our onion zucchini mixture has cooked down quite a bit and our wine has reduced. So we're gonna add a few more ingredients. I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic, because oh, I didn't have quite enough garlic scapes. We're gonna add that. We're almost out of our garlic. This is our garlic from last year and I only have that much left. And we should be harvesting our garlic out of the garden really soon, probably two or three weeks. Now I'm gonna add four jars of tomato sauce from last year's garden. Two of them that I'm adding, like this one, are flavored spaghetti sauce, and two of them are just nice and plain. On the spaghetti sauce that I made, I feel like I over seasoned it with too many herbs. That's why I'm doing two that are seasoned and two that aren't. And if I feel like I need to add more seasoning, I can, but that way it doesn't start out too overpowering. Last year was the first year I ever canned tomatoes and made anything out of them except for spaghetti sauce. I guess I've made ketchup too. We're gonna try ketchup again this year and see if we can do a better job. I wasn't happy. I didn't show it because it was in 2020 when I made ketchup the first time. But I normally just do plain and I like the spaghetti sauce, but I don't like it 100%. So definitely we need to do some tweaking to that recipe. So now we're just gonna let this cook down and kind of marry all the flavors and then we can assemble our lasagna. So let's now, I think we're ready to assemble all of our meatballs and our meatloaf. But first, I'm gonna rinse these out and I'm gonna put them in the dishwasher. We have our ground beef in both of our bowls. I'm gonna chop up a bunch of parsley that I harvested this morning. Parsley is not in the sweet and sour meatball recipe, but because it's fresh from the garden, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit to both bowls. So I'm gonna add some to the meatloaf some to the meatballs, and some to the pasta sauce. We're gonna save this little for something else. Not sure what we're gonna put it in yet, but I'm sure we'll find a use for it. This one is our sweet and sour meatball, so we're gonna add some ginger. You could add fresh ginger or grated ginger, whatever you have on hand. I happen to have some fresh ginger today, but I use powder all the time. I'm gonna add five eggs into each one, and I am a little bit more than doubling the recipe, and that's why I'm doing that. Now we're gonna add salt to both of them. Pepper. Our oats, half in each. And I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic to each one, because garlic scapes have a pretty mild garlic flavor. This one is done, so we need to finish our meatballs and our meatloaf. We're gonna add some ketchup, some stone ground mustard, Worcestershire. We have both of our meat mixtures done. I'm gonna mix both of these up and we'll be back when I go to shape them. This is our sweet and sour meatballs and I'm using a cookie scoop in order to make them even. This makes the process go a lot faster. I scoop all of them out and then I take a second and I do roll them out so that they're nice, smooth, and even. And that's my favorite way to do it. We are gonna bake these meatballs and so we're putting those in the oven and then we're gonna go ahead and shape our meatloaf. I was gonna use this same mixture to make meatballs. This is not the recipe I typically use to make meatballs, but it would make really good meatballs. 
but I decided not to do that. I just, after rolling out all the sweet and sour meatballs, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna make three meatloafs, and so that's what I'm doing here. I prefer my meatloafs to be baked in a loaf shape in the oven like this, so you get three sides that brown really well, as opposed to putting them in an actual loaf pan. So I'm gonna throw these in the freezer, and then at the end, I will show you how we're gonna package those up for longer freezer storage. I just remembered I had zucchini in here thawing that we were gonna put in the meatballs and in the meatloaf. Oh well, I'll try to figure something else to put them in. Oh, I know what I'll put them in. I'll put them in the Italian stuffed peppers. Now that we have the meatloaf in the freezer and our meatballs in the oven, we need to make the sweet and sour sauce. Friends, this stuff is so good, so good. So in this, Pan, I'm gonna put two cups of ketchup. Now this is my homemade ketchup, and I really like my homemade ketchup for cooking with it. This is the perfect application for it. I don't like it just to put on a burger for two reasons. I did not peel my tomatoes, and the second reason is I didn't cook it down enough. So those are the two things that I wanna try to do this next, or this season, to make my ketchup be a little bit better. So now I just added two cups of brown sugar and we're gonna add our white distilled vinegar. This is what makes it sweet and sour. We're gonna add some sriracha sauce or any kind of hot sauce that you like. I feel like it really needs some sort of heat because you got your sweet, your sour, and then a little bit of heat is really yummy. And now to thicken it, we're gonna add some white flour and all we're gonna do is whisk this together and our sauce is done. It's that simple. You can make this with chicken too. I, I used to do that all the time where I would cut chicken into about inch sized pieces. I would put it in cornstarch and then an egg and then fry the chicken pan sear it and then put the sauce over that and that was fantastic. But that is a little bit more work than meatballs. Meatballs just seem to be a lot easier and we really like that. So you wanna make sure you stir in that flour before it gets too warm so that you don't get clumps. And we're just gonna cook this for a few minutes until it thickens up. I need a half a cup of soy sauce for this recipe and I don't have any soy sauce in my house. I own soy sauce, it's at the other house. So what I think I'm gonna do, cause I don't wanna run to the store just for this one thing that's gonna take too much time out of the day. When I wrap this in foil, I'm gonna make a note, add, a quarter cup of soy sauce to the sauce because it's a half it's a quarter cup per recipe and we're doubling the recipe so that is what i'm going to do i just have to remember to write that on the foil so i don't forget it definitely needs that soy sauce because it needs that little bit of saltiness to balance everything out but that's okay we're just going to run we're just going to go with it and we're going to move on to the next thing i think i'm going to go ahead and get the marinates ready because we have quite a few of them we're going to do and then the stove is kind of at capacity at the moment. I only have two more things that I need to cook on the stove and it's not super hard. We have to saute some onions and peppers for the enchiladas and we have to saute some kale for the Italian stuffed peppers. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the marinades done and then we will have a little bit more space on our stove to do those two things. Oh, we have to make a bechamel sauce too. I completely changed my mind. I'm gonna go run to the store and get soy sauce because one of the marinades needs soy sauce as well, and I really don't want two recipes where I have to remember to put that in there. So I will be back in about 15, 20 minutes, and we will continue making these freezer meals. That didn't take very long at all. I just really didn't want to have to do that because I've got this in my bulk pantry, but that's okay, that's how it goes sometimes. So that's a half a cup of soy sauce in there. And we're going to mix that up. I'm going to give this a taste test now. It needed the soy sauce. That's perfect. Our meatballs are done. I could smell them when I walked into the house. They smell fantastic. So I'm going to turn the oven off and I'm just going to let them sit in there. Actually, no, I'm going to take them out. I think I'm going to strain a little bit of this grease out of here because there is a little bit in the bottom of this pan.
We're gonna start with our first marinated chicken recipe and it's fajita chicken. I have, we're, I'm doubling the recipe, so I have two green bell peppers here that I'm going to slice into long widths. Got a bowl for my veggie scraps. two bags of sliced really thinly chicken breast and we're going to do two of these so I'm going to split half the peppers into one bag and the other half into the other bag. We'll do half the white onions in one bag, half the white onions in the other. We're going to do the same thing with the peppers. Now we're going to season them. My taco seasoning that I make homemade does not have any salt in it, so we're gonna put some salt in each bag. About two tablespoons of lemon juice. Same with the honey. And about a quarter cup to a third of a cup of taco seasoning. And this is homemade taco seasoning. Now we're gonna mix everything up. I'll lay it flat and then we'll freeze it. You can cook this a bunch of different ways. My favorite way to cook this is to thaw it, lay it out on a nine by 13 Pyrex, put it in the oven at 400 degrees and stir it a couple times and it browns it up really nicely. You could cook it in a skillet from thawed. You could throw it in your instant pot. You could throw it in your crock pot and let it cook for all day. Oh, I forgot one ingredient. We're gonna put a quarter cup of oil in each one. So this couldn't be easier. This is one of my favorite convenience foods to have in my freezer. It's all ready to go for you. You've got all your veggies chopped. All you have to do is heat up some tortillas, have some sour cream, some shredded cheese, maybe dice up a tomato or two, and you've got yourself a beautiful dinner. The next recipe we're gonna do is a pineapple marinade. And we are going to do this on pork tenderloins and thighs. So I have one can of pineapple here. Now the recipe called for crushed pineapple. I just have chunks, so we're gonna make this marinade in the blender. I'm gonna add one jalapeno, garlic. You could add fresh if you have it. I don't have any, so we're just gonna use that. I'm gonna add a chunk, two chunks of ginger, because we are doubling this recipe. Salt, soy sauce, honey, some oil, and apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna taste it. The recipe, technically I needed a little bit more pineapple. I should have used two cans of just the fruit, but I only brought down one can from my pantry at the other place. So I used the juice and the fruit. I've never done that before. Usually I just use the pineapple. That is fantastic. So good. So, 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 so good. Here we have some chicken thighs and we have two pork tenderloins. I'm gonna divide this marinade in half between the two. That ginger is just fantastic. I don't usually use fresh ginger just because it's an extra step to peel it. But every time I do, I'm always glad because it, it does taste better than powder. It is a little bit more liquidy than it usually is because I use the pineapple juice, but that's totally fine. The next marinade we're gonna do is ranch chicken. And I have, you can use just bottled ranch, but I have ranch powder that I make homemade ranch powder. I have a recipe for this linked down in the description box. So I'm gonna kind of make my own ranch here. Now that our ranch is all mixed up, I'm gonna divide this into 
these bags of chicken thighs. So I'm going to put half of it in one bag and the other half in the other bag. And for the buffalo part, I have Frank's Red Hot. We're going to do about equal parts ranch to Frank's Red Hot, and then we'll mix this up. And that could not have been easier. You know what, that doesn't look like I put enough Frank's Hot in there. I think I'm going to go ahead and use that whole bottle, and it'll be the whole bottle between two bags. There's about eight chicken thighs in each one of these bags that we're going to be marinating. This is a 12 ounce bottle, so that's six ounces each, which makes more sense for making this equal parts ranch to equal parts buffalo sauce. For all of the marinated chickens, what I like to do is try to get as much air out as possible and mix them up before I freeze them. And then I like to lay them flat like this and we'll freeze them flat in the freezer. The reason I like to do it that way is they thaw the fastest if they are one layer thin versus if I put them in the freezer like this, this is gonna take a lot longer to thaw than if it's one thin layer. And I want them all mixed up because as they thaw in the refrigerator, then they're marinating our meat. That's why I love having homemade marinated meat in the fridge because usually if you get it out a day or two or three before you're gonna cook it, it has all that time to marinate. Even if you get it out the night before or the morning of, and it's marinating while it's thawing, that's better than having to kind of whip up a chicken and remember to get something marinated early in the day if you want it marinating for any length of time. So now I'm gonna put this away and we're gonna get going on the peach marinade. One thing I forgot to do was label my bags before I put the meat and marinade into them. It is a whole lot easier to label your Ziploc bag before there is any contents in them because it just, it's just easier. So if you're gonna do this, go ahead and write on the bag what is actually gonna go into the bag. We are about to get very creative in the kitchen right now because I was gonna make peach chili marinade. Can't find my peach preserves. I thought I brought them down from the new house and I can't find my garlic chili paste. So we are going to make up our own recipe. I'll write down exactly what I do. I think it's gonna be really good. We're just gonna figure it out together. So I happen to have about six or seven fresh peaches. So I went ahead and peeled those, got them in the blender. And now what we're gonna do is add the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce, a good amount of black pepper, salt, sriracha. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of that as well. Garlic infused oil. Apple cider vinegar, and we're gonna blend that up. This was the first freezer meal. I cooked the pork tenderloin in this recipe, and oh my goodness, it is now a family favorite. Now we're gonna taste this concoction that we made together. It smells good. That is fan. Whew. A little warmth from the sriracha, sweetness, but not over sweet. Perfect amount of vinegar, delicious. So we're gonna do one bag of pork tenderloin with half the marinade and the other bag with chicken thighs. And these chicken thighs do have a bone in and skin on. So something a little bit different. Into the fridge these go. We have one more marinade and this is the last one. Soup, this is probably the easiest one. It's a orange cumin marinade. We're gonna put some orange juice in our blender, you don't even need a blender for this, but we've been using it, so I'm gonna keep using it. Smoked paprika, turmeric, that'll help brighten that orange color. Salt, pepper, oil. When you're making a marinade, it's basically you're making like a vinaigrette. You want a acid, which could be orange juice, lemon juice, vinegar, something like that. You want some sort of fat agent, so oil, you could use any kind of oil depending on what kind of marinade you're making. Coconut oil, butter even, olive oil, avocado oil, some sort of fat, sour cream like in the ranch. And then it's good to have a little bit of sweetness and then you can balance everything out. So this is a little bit of honey. So you can really make a marinade for meats or anything you want 
fish, out of anything you might have on hand. We're gonna give it a taste test. That is so good, but I made it wrong. I thought this was cumin. This is garam masala, which is an Indian spice. If you're gonna make like butter chicken or tiki masala or something like that, that's what you use. I just made up a new marinade. So you can use tiki masala in this instead of cumin if you want. That tastes really good with the orange. And that is how new recipes are developed and made is just by accidents like that. Now we're gonna pour this into our chicken thighs. I have two bags of chicken thighs here. I'm just mixing this up a little bit before I pour it in. You can use any kind of meat you want or any cut of meat you want in these recipes. If you prefer chicken breasts, use chicken breasts. If you like chicken thighs with skin on or, or boneless, skinless chicken thighs, you can use whatever you want. I tried to do a little bit of a few different things to keep things interesting. So we use chicken breasts in the fajita chicken. A couple of the recipes we used boneless, skinless chicken thighs. A couple of the recipes we used bone in, skin on chicken thighs. You could use drumsticks if you want with some of these, with these recipes. You could use really whatever, whatever your favorite cut is. My goal for the majority of these marinated meats is to grill them. And I've never grilled chicken thighs with bone in and skin on. So that's kind of why I wanted to have a combination of a few different options to me just so I can experiment and learn on the grill. If you use bone in skin on meat, I wouldn't recommend you put it in the crock pot because the skin is gonna get soft and not crispy. So into the fridge these go. Now that we have all the marinades done, I made way more than I realized. I didn't realize I had this many recipes we were making. We're gonna finish up the meatballs and we still get to make the enchiladas and the stuffed peppers. You can see how our sweet and sour sauce has thickened up nicely. So all we do is pour this over our meatballs. So we'll do half on one pan, half on the other pan. And this creates a delicious sauce to put over rice, veggies that you cook. This is so good, so good. One thing I love about this meatball recipe is that it's fully cooked. Once it comes out of the freezer and you thaw it, all you have to do is basically warm it up and it's good to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the lasagna. In our bowl, I have two things of ricotta. These are 32 ounce ricottas. I have three eggs we're gonna put into our ricotta mixture. And we're gonna add some garlic powder, salt, good amount of pepper. And this is homemade onion top pesto. If I had basil, I would put that in here or basil pesto, I'd put that in here. But this is something I made and it adds a really deliciousness to lasagna. I can link the recipe to this if you're interested. If you grow onions, it's a great way to maximize your onion harvest because you're harvesting the greens and it doesn't affect the onion at all. It actually helps the onion grow better. And you're eating something and harvesting something that typically just gets thrown out, or not thrown out, but usually composted. Usually that part dries when you harvest the onion and you don't eat it. So we're gonna mix all this together and then I am gonna add a little bit of mozzarella cheese. Just a little bit, because we're gonna add mozzarella cheese. It's gonna be one of the layers. Mix that up. And now all of our components for our lasagna are done. And the easy part is assembling it. So now we get to assemble our lasagnas. I had the thought that there's nothing cooking on my stove and I need some components for the stuffed peppers to be cooked before I can assemble those. So I thought I would get those components ready and on the stove cooking while we assembled our lasagnas so that we could have our stove working for us and it not sitting idle. That's just a way I try to be as efficient as possible. So this is our homegrown kale and some onions. I definitely wanna make sure that my stove and things are working for me while I'm doing something else. I don't want to waste that time. So we're gonna add the onion and the kale and we're gonna let that saute and cook down. That'll turn into a really yummy filling. And here we're gonna melt butter and we're gonna make a bechamel sauce for our stuffed peppers. So we're gonna have two things going while we assemble our lasagnas. 
I just added salt to both of our pans. And now we're gonna add flour to our butter. This is creating a roux. We're gonna cook that together for about a minute to two minutes. All right, I feel so much better having those components on the stove cooking for us, and so we're just maximizing our time in the kitchen. I have these oven-ready lasagna noodles. These are my favorite lasagna noodles. They are the, almost, they come out almost the texture of homemade. Obviously, they're not homemade, but they are, the I think, the second best. I also have some pre-cooked Italian sausage that I'm putting in here. I just do one layer of that. I love having pre-cooked meat in my freezer. It just makes life so much easier. So I always try to have Italian sausage pre-cooked in my freezer that's cooked and also bacon so that I can just pull that out anytime I need it. I need some of that Italian sausage for the filling for the stuffed peppers. So I only put one layer in these lasagnas and I'm super excited to have these in my freezer. Our bechamel sauce is thick and nice and perfect, so I'm gonna set that aside. I did add a little bit of nutmeg to that, and now I'm gonna add some black pepper, some garlic, and I had already added some salt to this onion kale mixture while the onions were cooking down. I like to add salt to my onions when they're cooking because I feel like it draws out the moisture and they cook a little bit faster. And then I'm gonna add the rest of that cooked Italian sausage to the onion kale mixture and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in just a minute. Now I need to prep the peppers for our stuffed peppers. I'm gonna take the tops off and I will save those tops. Those are not gonna go to waste and I'm gonna chop those and put those in the enchiladas that we're going to be cooking and then the tops and the seeds are going to go in my scrap bowl and my chickens are going to enjoy that. Now I didn't quite make enough of this red sauce, no big deal. I have some pizza sauce canned here and I'm going to put a layer of pizza sauce on two of my casserole dishes. This is for the stuffed peppers and the pizza sauce is delicious. It's not gonna be quite as rich as the sauce we made because there isn't any red wine in it and there's no onions, but the filling and the bechamel sauce will be rich enough that these stuffed peppers are gonna be just delicious. So I put the rest of the sauce we made down on one of the casserole dishes. I was just thinking I could have mixed all of that together and that would have been really good, but I didn't do that, so that's okay. This is the bowl we're gonna make our sausage stuffing Italian pepper mixture in, so we're gonna add that into there. And then the tops of the peppers, I chopped those up and we're gonna get those sauteing for the enchiladas. This is the brown rice we cooked earlier. I did cook this brown rice in chicken broth so that it has a little bit more flavor. And now we're gonna add some cheese and mix this up. And this is the filling for our Italian stuffed peppers. It's so good, it's super versatile. You could make this with ground beef if you wanted. I like the flavor that the sausage adds. You could put different vegetables in it. If you don't like kale, you could use spinach or you could also use broccoli or zucchini, kind of whatever you want. I love a recipe like this because you can totally adapt it to whatever works for your family's um, palate or whatever you have in your fridge. Now I'm taking our bechamel sauce and I'm gonna drizzle that over the top. This is what makes this recipe, I think, so good the combination of the red sauce on the bottom and the white sauce on the top and the really rich yummy filling. I'm gonna to top it with a little bit of mozzarella cheese and this is done. We are making some serious headway on all of this. In this bowl, we have our pre-cooked chicken for our enchiladas. That is what we're gonna get going on next. Our peppers are all done sauteing. They're just cooling a little bit on the stove while I finish prepping, getting the filling ready. I'm gonna put the juice of, I think two, yeah, let's do two lemons in here. Add a little bit of brightness and citrusy goodness to our filling. I cut up three lemons because we still are making that corn salad and we're going to use some fresh lemon for that as well. For enchilada filling or burrito filling, wet burrito filling, whatever you wanna call it, it's more of a burrito because it has it's gonna have rice and chicken in it. I'm gonna chop up some fresh cilantro. Half of this cilantro is gonna be for the corn. The other half is gonna be for this. So I'm gonna put half in here. We have our rice 
that we cooked with the broth that just has so much flavor because we did that. We're gonna add that in here. And now we're gonna add our beautifully sauteed peppers. I would put onion in here as well, but I didn't think, I thought I had too much filling already as it was. I didn't think onions would fit. So onions would be really good in this. We're just gonna not have it today. So we're gonna mix this filling together. I'm running out of containers, so I'm gonna use this cast iron, and this is what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. This is salsa verde that we canned last year together. This is made with tomatillos. The other one we're gonna to use to top it with was made with tomatoes, green tomatoes. So we're just gonna put a little bit on the bottom so the tortillas don't stick. It's gonna work out perfect to have this for dinner tonight because I'm making that corn salad. So we'll just have this for dinner and it's gonna be a perfectly delicious, yummy dinner. So we have some whole wheat tortillas. I'm just gonna take some of the filling and we're gonna roll it up. You could use whatever you want or whatever you have on hand. You could put beans in this instead of chicken. I just happen to have that chicken. That's why I use chicken, but I really like to make this vegetarian sometimes. I just preheated the oven to 300 degrees. Mm, this smells so good. So you can make salsa verde with green tomatoes as well as with tomatillos. I do prefer it with tomatillos, but it is a good way to use up those green tomatoes. There's no cheese in these enchiladas, so I'm gonna put a good amount of cheese on top. Dinner's going in the oven. And now we're gonna make our side. This is perfect how this is working out tonight. This is the corn that we cooked earlier. I cut it off the cob and put it in this bowl. And we're gonna finish making the salad. I've got two lemons. We're gonna juice two lemons into our salad slash salsa. Now we're gonna add our cilantro we chopped. We have a few more veggies we're gonna prep for our salad. We've got cherry tomatoes here. We're gonna dice these up. You know what, before I do that, I think I'm gonna dice the onion and the jalapeno because these are gonna make a juicy mess and they are gonna get in the way. I have one fresh jalapeno. I'm gonna de-stem it and de-seed it just to make it not quite so spicy. Now I have a little red onion. I'm gonna cut this really, really finely. Now we're gonna go ahead and chop these tomatoes. I'm gonna chop all of them. All right, we got these all beautifully chopped up. Add them to our bowl. Now all we have to do with this is mix it up. Look how beautiful that is, all those beautiful colors, the yellow, the green, the purple, the red. Couldn't ask for it to be any prettier, really. I haven't put in any salt in this yet. I have a little bit of garlic salt I'm gonna add. Look at that stunning beauty. Let's give it a taste test. I wanted to try to get a little bit of everything in the bite, so let's give this a try. Mm. Mm-hmm. Woo! That jalapeno has a little heat to it. Perfect amount of lemon juice, perfect amount of salt. It's nice, warm. My mouth is definitely a little bit warm. So I think we're gonna eat this more like a salsa than a salad because it is a little spicy. It's perfect for me, but I think for Josh, it'll be too much if he just eats it like with a fork. But on top, of our enchiladas or our burritos. Perfect. So now let's finish the other side salad, the macaroni salad that we started earlier. For our Hawaiian salad, we're gonna put two teaspoons of sugar and two cups of mayonnaise. We're gonna mix this all together. Hawaiian mac salad is traditionally eaten with teriyaki chicken and we didn't make that today, obviously, but I think it would be really, really good with 
that buffalo ranch chicken we made because the creaminess of the salad with kind of this tangy spicy buffalo chicken i think maybe that that's what we'll have for dinner tomorrow or probably not tomorrow i don't know if we're going up to the new house tomorrow tomorrow's friday and we've been kind of relaxing on friday nights so if we don't do it friday we'll do it saturday but these two salads are going to be plenty plenty of food for josh and i for more than just this weekend as sides so i'm really excited to have these done i need to give this a taste test still to make sure oh i didn't salt and pepper it okay we're gonna give this a taste test this is what went really quickly when we had that party i made this for a housewarming party and josh didn't get any of the leftovers and he was pretty disappointed about it so that's kind of why i decided to make it Mm -hmm. perfect i wanted to say i don't know what i was thinking thinking i could get cookie dough made today that is i always think i can do a little bit more than i can and i think we are plenty productive no bad feelings about not getting to cookie dough i'll do that next time we're in the kitchen together right after i shaped these meatloafs i put them in the freezer just like this to flash freeze and now we're going to put them in a ziploc bag there is a glaze that goes along with this meatloaf, but I don't make that glaze until after it thaws and I'm ready to cook it. I put the glaze on and then it goes in the oven. I have my handy dandy Sharpie because half the battle is labeling what you made so you know what you made. What I do is I wrap everything in foil twice and then I mark what it is. And I like to put the date on it. I'm just going to put the month and the year because I know that's close enough. I cook these both from frozen and from thawed. I've never had an issue with glass breaking in the oven. That's probably my number one question I get asked is do I worry about these Pyrex going into the oven from either a thawed state or a frozen state and I don't. If I cook these Pyrex from a frozen state, I turn the oven on and while the oven is preheating, I put the casserole in the oven. It does take about two hours to cook something from a frozen state. Sometimes two and a half hours, like one of these dense lasagnas, could take a very, very long time. So I would cook it covered. If you cook it from a thawed state, it usually takes about 35 to 40 minutes. And I usually always bake these at 375 to 400, just depending on how fast I want my dinner to be done. I will leave directions on how to cook that marinated meats that we made, either in the crock pot, the Instapot, the oven, or on the grill. I am probably gonna be cooking most of that marinated meat on the grill. If you wanna see how I cook with these freezer meals, you can watch my what's for dinner. I usually cook one or two of them in a week, and then maybe I cook one or twice a week, just depending on how the week is. Josh and I will eat whatever I make for dinner for leftovers, so we don't have to worry about lunches. That is typically how we eat is I make a big dinner, we eat it for lunches, or we eat it for dinner, leftovers, whatever it might be. One reason I like to make these in glass Pyrex is because it saves a lot of money and waste. The foil pans, the disposable ones, have gotten quite expensive and then you just throw them away so it seems like a waste. Now I am using two pieces of foil on this like I said. What I do is I take the outer foil and I recycle that and I reuse it so I, when I go to cook it I'll take that outer piece of foil off I'll put it in my drawer where I store my foil and then I can use that for something else and then the inner foil I usually loosen the one that's actually touching the food so that it's not touching the food when it goes into the oven but I do like to keep it covered so it doesn't get over baked in the oven so that is even though I use two pieces of foil I do try to save one of them for another use Friend, if that wasn't productive, I don't know what was. Let me go over what we have today. We did two lasagnas, three Italian stuffed peppers, and those are so fantastic. They are Josh and I's absolute favorite right now. We have two sweet and sour meatballs and two enchiladas. One of those enchiladas is in the oven right now, so we're gonna have that for dinner along with the corn salad. And we also got the macaroni salad. So two sides, so I don't have to worry about cooking because we have the enchiladas in the oven. We have our two sides, except for grilling one of these marinated meats. Before I freeze all these marinated meats, I'm gonna ask Josh which one he wants. We also got three meatloafs, 
two fajita chickens, two buffalo ranch chickens. We have our what was supposed to be orange cumin chicken, but now is garam masala orange chicken. And it tastes very good. That marinade was delicious, so I think it's gonna be good on the chicken. And then we have a pork and chicken jalapeno pineapple marinade, which is fantastic as well, along with pork and chili, peach chili marinade. That is so good too. I'm excited for all this. I, I need to ask Josh which one we're gonna grill this weekend. And because we have the sides, we have the enchiladas in the oven, and I'm just gonna grill something probably tomorrow or Saturday. Cooking is basically taken care of for me for the next good amount of time. It, I will probably go out into the garden tomorrow and harvest a bunch of lettuce, get that washed up so we can have side salads because while the lettuce is in, we wanna make sure we're taking advantage of having those salads. Those fresh greens are just, you can't buy them at the store, they're so good. If you enjoyed this video, I do have a bunch more freezer meal videos I can put here. We have some breakfast ideas and more dinner ideas, tons and tons of ideas. I'll put those there, you can go and enjoy those. Also put some garden videos if you're interested in what the garden looks like, preserving food and kind of seeing how I can some of this stuff we used. I'll put some of those videos down here. You can go enjoy those. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I wanna say a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. I hope you guys are having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.